Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Happy hump day. Happy hump day, everybody. Hope that everybody's doing well. It's hump day. Come on, wake up. Get out of your bed. Get motivated. The holidays are over. Hope that everyone is doing all right. Uh, it's hump day. And we are back. Good morning, everybody. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday. Hope that Christmas was blessed. Good morning, Delaney. Good morning, Miss Jonah. Helen, how you doing? Uh, hope that you all are doing well. Uh, Brother Barry, my neighbor, good morning. Hey, Miss Sonia, been praying for you guys. Miss Deb, how you doing this morning? Hey, Glennis, happy new year, my brother. Uh, hope that everybody's doing well. Uh, I, <laughs> yes, I'm happy. Mine just left uh, for school. I know I can get a hallelujah to that. Uh, we are glad the kids are back in school. Thank God for it. Uh, uh, I got a question for you. Uh, what's on your mind this morning? What's on your mind? And when I say that, uh, what are you intentionally putting on your mind? uh this morning uh in other words what are your thoughts fixed on philippians 4 8 reads this way it says finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things think about such things i want to know what's on your mind uh, what are you focused on this morning? I talked a lot before uh, the holiday break about going into the new year, how important it was to set goals uh, and and how important it was to think about your vision for 2017. But I got to tell you this this morning. It all starts up here. It all starts in your mind. Hey, Auntie, it all starts in your mind. Watch this. I want to tell you a story. Joyce and I, when we first got married, we were living in a little apartment uh, for about six months. After about six months, she got tired of being in a confined space. And she said to me, she said, babe, let's look at buying a house. Um, I promptly said to her, uh, we can't afford to buy a house. Uh, we won't qualify as far as the credit goes to buy a house. It doesn't even make any sense for us to apply for a house. Uh, I told her, let's just wait until we know we qualify uh, in order to buy a house and then We'll look at buying a house. And she said to me, she said, well, let's at least just try. She said, you're saying we don't qualify. You're saying we can't afford it. We hadn't even looked into it. So how do you know? Uh, and me being the husband that I am, I said to her, well, Miss Smarty Pants, if you feel like we qualify, if you feel like we can afford it, won't you try it? And then when you come back to me with your feelings all hurt and you're disappointed, I'm telling you right now, I'm having no mercy. Well, Joyce and jumped out there and she went and she applied for both of us and I signed the necessary paperwork. And lo and behold, seven months after we were married, we moved into our first home. Watch this. In my mind, we didn't qualify. In my mind, we couldn't afford it. In my mind, it was out of our reach. And I got news for you. The money that we, the amount that we were paying on the house note ended up being less than we were paying for rent. Now watch this. Had we gone with my line of thought, had we gone with what I was thinking about, then we, would, we wouldn't have made the move and accomplished our first goal as a couple as early as we did. And I got to wonder, how many goals do you have for this year that you are already talking yourself out of? How many goals, how many dreams, how many visions do you have for this year that already you're saying to yourself, this is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You got you to gotta fix your thought life. You got to focus on what the Bible said is true. And a lot of times we assume things are true that are not necessarily true uh, without investigating it, without looking into it. Uh, a lot of times we go into situations 
thinking negatively. And if when we go into situations thinking negatively, well, then we approach the situation in a negative way. Said a man broke down on the road uh, late at night. His tire went flat. Uh, had a friend nearby uh, who he thought that he could ask uh, to help him fix the flat. He didn't have a car jack. Went to the friend's house. Uh, and on the way there, his thoughts were, it's late at night. His thoughts were, he's going to be mad because I woke him up. His thoughts were, he's going to get angry and he's not going to give me this car jack. His thoughts were all negative. And by the time he got to the friend's house, he had thought himself into negativity. And when he knocked on the friend's door, he, he the first thing out of his mouth was, if you were a good friend, you would give me a car jack right now. Bad attitude, the whole nine yards. How many situations have you approached with negative thoughts, with bad thoughts, thinking negatively, not knowing the truth, and as a result, you approached it in that way, and it didn't start off like it should have? I know I'm guilty of it. Listen, you got to fix your thought life. You got to learn, you got to train yourself to dwell on true things, things that are positive. You got to train yourself to say, you know what? God made me a conqueror. You know what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know what? God said that he wanted to prosper me and not harm me. And that's not to say that you can will, you can uh, change the situation necessarily because, you know, what God wants to do, he's going to do, and it may not be good for you. But I just believe that a lot of times we talk ourselves out of the blessings of God because of our thought life and because we think negatively and because we go into it with a negative thought. Train yourself to dwell on what's true, what's good, uh, what's noble. Uh, the Bible tells us to think on these things. Hey, I have some exciting, exciting news, some super exciting news. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, on February, the first Sunday in February, the first Sunday in February, Faith Bible Church, Pastor A. Nathan Young, uh, we will broadcast for the first time on WHNO, uh, your cable television network. Uh, we'll be broadcasting every Sunday morning at 7 o'clock a.m. on WHNO. For those of you who have uh, Charter or Cox, look for us on WHNO. I'm really, really excited about it. We're going to be there every Sunday morning at 7 o'clock a.m. This is the beginning of what I believe God's going to use to do great and awesome things to reach more people for his kingdom. If you're out of town where you just can't get to us, uh, if you can get to WHNO on Sunday mornings, we will be broadcasting uh, our our sermons from uh, Sunday morning on that channel. They'll run two weeks behind. I believe God's going to use it to reach some folks uh, for His kingdom. And I got to the real. Why are you telling us about this? Number one, because I want you to tune in. Uh, especially if you uh, can't reach Faith Bible Church. But the second reason why I'm telling you about this is because uh, going into this thing, uh, it took me being focused on the positive because this is newfound territory that we've never done before. And I had to tell myself, Satan was trying to tell me it's not going to work. Satan was trying to tell me your people are not going to support it. Satan was trying to tell me that uh, it's not going to be successful. Nobody wants to hear what you guys have to say. And I had to train myself. You know what? God laid this upon my heart. He impressed upon me to do it. I'm going to do it. It's going to work. Why? If for no other reason, because God said to do it. And if God says to do it, well, then he makes the way and he causes all things to come together in order for it to work. I'm very, very excited about it. I uh, hope that you guys will tune in uh, on WHNO, 7 o'clock uh, a.m. Sunday mornings. And if you're in the area, you're looking for a church, holler at us, 745 and 1045, 1148 North Columbia Street, 57209 Allen Road in Slidell, 9 o'clock a.m. on Sunday mornings. Hey, can't wait to see you there. Remember, today, I want you to practice focusing on positive thoughts. You got some people in your life, some people in your life 
who you have a broken relationship with. And the reason why you have a broken relationship and you hadn't made the steps to mend that relationship is because all the enemy reminds you of is the negative between you and that person. You've forgotten that there are some positive things, that there are some good things about that person. You have a situation in your life that you just continue to think negative about because that's all the enemy reminds you of. Train yourself to think positive thoughts, to dwell on what is true, to dwell on what is good, to think what is good, and then watch the peace of God guard your hearts. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. I love you. And uh, if no other reason, you ought to have a wonderful day because it's hump day. God bless you. See y'all Friday morning, 8 o'clock a.m. Be here. Swipe this and share it. Swipe it and share it on your page. Love you. Goodbye.